I'm thankful, you know, and uh, he's been good to each and every one of us. And, you know, I, I prepared for tonight. I've been praying and, uh, you know, I had, had a change happen at work and uh, I won't go into the details, but I've got a lot more time now. Uh, I went from working on average, uh, not close to Brother Jay's hours, but I was, I was doing quite a few. I was doing on average about 60 hours a week, sometimes 70, 75 hours a week, and now I'm doing 40 and that's it. So I'm thankful for that, you know, and I've spent a lot more time in the Word and praying, and I'm thankful for that. But, you know, I'm prepared, but I'm still nervous. So you guys pray for me. I want to give the Word that God would have said, you know. He's, he's got messages that He wants His people to hear, and I pray that I bring the Word that He would have me to bring tonight. And, you know, I wanted to testify tonight. I was thinking about uh, Brother Lindell, Sister Betty's husband. He came to my mind yesterday. And I remember his testimony. And I remember he used to say, I'm thankful, or I thank the Lord, that I'm right here, yes. right now. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. You know, he, made, he left an impression. I didn't know him too, too long before he, he went on to be with the Lord. But he, he left an impression on me. And yes. I'm thankful for that. And to kind of expound on that, um, how many here have been in a place in their life that they're thankful that God didn't take them at that point in time? How many here? I mean, none of us have been saved all along since we were born, right? I mean, I'm thankful that God didn't take me. I can look back and see certain points in my life where it's like, Lord, thank you for not taking me then. When I wrecked my car on 94, you know, I'm thankful God didn't take me then because I didn't have the Holy Ghost. I didn't have the Spirit of God dwelling in me. And I'm looking back. I don't have to say, you know, he took me at that point, but I can be thankful that he didn't and that I'm here today and that I'm in the body of Christ. I'm thankful for that. Each and every one of us, we ought to be thankful for that. And if we're not where we need to be, if looking forward from here, we would say, man, I I'm thankful God didn't take me at that point, you know, on that Thursday night back in 2021. We can be there. We can be ready. So I'm thankful for that. You know, I thought about Brother Lundell and thankful for pillars in the church that, that they leave that example for us to follow. Uh, even, even, you know, even when he's gone on, I don't know how long it's been, probably over 10 years. And just he came back to my mind, 14 years. So I just started coming to church, but thankful for that tonight. You know, we have to come to God in a certain way. And, and God wants us to come to him, and he's, he has a, a specific manner that he wants us to come to him. And sometimes we let ourselves get in the way. We let ourselves get in the way of coming to the Lord. And if, if I had a topic tonight, it would be get over yourself. Because sometimes it sounds funny, and, and honestly it could sound blunt, it could sound brash, but sometimes we have to get over ourselves. We have to put the flesh behind us in subjection, kill the flesh. You know, then, and if you don't master that, if you don't get over yourself, you can't come to the Lord, you can't be thankful. It's hard to be grateful if you constantly just worry about yourself because you're just focused on what you don't have. Uh, it's hard to forgive. It's hard to forgive someone else if, if we don't get over ourselves. You know, we're going to talk about different situations in the Bible. And, you know, if we're not humble, if we don't get over ourselves, think of if you go through a fast food window, and I eat out all the time. And, you know, if you go there, are you just grateful when you get to the, the window and you get your food? Are you just grateful to them? Like, oh, my, I'm just so glad you gave me my Whopper meal. Are you grateful for that? No, because you've, you've paid for it. You deserve it, right? You paid the money. You deserve it. But the things that God's done for us, we didn't deserve. <laughs> And so we need to get over ourselves and realize how grateful we ought to be for what the Lord did for us. And if, you know, just to read a couple verses here in Leviticus, like I said, please pray for me that, you know, I would bring this out the way the Lord would want it to be brought out. Leviticus 10. And I started studying on this, and there's so much in the Bible on, on getting over ourselves, coming to God the right way, getting ourselves out of the way. And, you know, I just want to start out here in Leviticus, read a few verses here about what happens when you, when you don't come to God the right way. <laughs> uh, Leviticus 10 and 1. 10 and 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange 
fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. You know, this was after the tabernacle was implemented and they were offering the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is it, that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. You know, and they ended up carrying them out of there. You know, we have to come to God. It's a serious thing when we come to the Lord. And we can't mix our ways with God's ways. And we can't try to do our own thing and couple that and make it what we want. You know, so many people don't, they can't be taught because they're too married to the way that they think, the way that they feel. And instead of going with the word of God, they get married to those, those thoughts that they have and the way that they were brought up or, or what they think is right. And we just, we have to let all that go, get over ourselves and follow what the word of God says. And if we come to him right, you know, we'll be okay. But if we come to him wrong or we try to do it our own way, we're not going to get very far. We're going to read Psalm 51. Honing in on a couple of verses here. If you could turn there. Now, they offered that strange fire. God didn't command them to do it that way. You know, and people are doing things now that God didn't command them. God commanded something different. And they're changing it. And God's not pleased with that. All right, Psalm 51, 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And he realized that he had this, this transgression, that he had this sin upon him. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. You know, God doesn't want us to do the wrong things. He has done so much. He's left his word. He's given us signs. He's shown us the ways that we should do things. He wants us to do the right thing. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. You know, we're going to skip ahead. We, we know, we've read this psalm before. Jump over to 16, please. Verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. We come to God. We've, we've broken down the pieces of ourself, got ourself out of the way. Then God will be well pleased with that. That's what he wants. That's how he wants us to come to him. Get our, get our old man out of the way. Get the flesh out of the way. Break, break it down because <laughs> we built things up in our lives. We got to break those things back down, get them out of the way so that we can get to God the right way. You know, I was, I've been studying a ton on the tabernacle and all these sacrifices, these different offerings, and, and the, how specific God was when he was telling them what he wanted them to bring to him. And it wasn't about the sacrifices. It was about the obedience. It was about them being willing to give these things to God and to take away from what they had and give it to God. You know, we got to come to the Lord humbly, get ourselves out of the way. Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me for a purpose. He said, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Nothing about that said, the, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to build me up, to bless me, to give me the things that I want in life, the, to, to advance me. No, it says, the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. I'm doing something for the meek. 
something for someone else. It's not about me. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. This world's full of the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. I can't comfort someone who's mourning if I'm too worried about myself. I can't proclaim the day of the Lord if I'm too worried about myself, if I haven't gotten over myself. I got to get over myself so that I can worry about other people is what the key to all this is. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. God can do such great things. <laughs> we'll allow him to use us in the right way. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I've been heavy before, you know, but thank God that there, was, there were men of God. There's a church that has brought me out of that. There's a God that brought me out of that heaviness. You know, and we need to get over ourselves so we can bring other people out of that. That's what God's telling us to do here. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. It says that they might be called trees of righteousness. You know, he's, God's worried about people. We need to be worried about people, not me. Amen. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. I'm going to use you to help restore what once was. But it's not about the prophet here. It's about the people, the work that God wants done so that God can be glorified. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. You know, if we do the work of the Lord, the blessings, they'll take care of themselves. God will take care of us. If we don't worry about that, and we put other people and Him first in our lives. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. <laughs> I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. You know, he hates robbery for burnt offering. You need to come to God the right way. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offering among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. You know, all this starts with someone getting themselves out of the way and allowing the Lord to work through them. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will not, if not, I will greatly rejoice in myself. <laughs> I'm going to figure out what makes me happy. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to be happy about it. <laughs> No, I'm gonna, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Amen. Not in the things of this life, not in the things of the world of the flesh. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Think about this verse, okay? There, I, I was going to preach. I had a message. I had a thought. Levels of gratitude. You know, I taught levels of gratitude. Different, different levels of appreciation. You know, if, if I hold the door open for you, Brother Jay, say thank you, right? You know, and you'll go through the door, Right? If I pick something up off the floor for you and give it to you, say, say thanks, you know, that's, that's nice. What if, you know, if I come over and, and, and your water heater went out and I come over 3 a.m. and help you fix that, you know, I wouldn't be too much help, but I'd try. You know, that would be a little bit more, right? You'd be a little bit more grateful for that. Okay, what if you're broken down on I-65 three hours away and I drive down there to help you until you get a tow truck? That's a little bit more, right? 
if you're, if you're drowning in a lake and I somehow learned to swim well and I come out there and save you, right? That, how, how grateful would you be for that? How grateful would you be if someone literally saved your life? Would you stop talking about it? Would you? I mean, no. There's different levels, but we got to get over ourselves, realize what God truly did for us. So reread this scripture again. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Why? What has he done for us? Are we that grateful for it? For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has saved us. He made a way that we could be saved. He was totally selfless, and he made a way that we could be saved. I'm thankful for that. But it's not just a thanks, you know, thanks, God. But how are we going to get over ourselves in order to show our gratitude to him for what he did for us and bring other people in, into the way? For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. You know, what God did, he's worthy of everything that we could give him. And more, and more. We could never repay God for what he's done for us. You know, let's go to, let's go to Romans chapter 1, if you can. Romans chapter 1. Starting in verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You know, how many, we could probably name a bunch of people. People think they're wise. And they think that they have, that they, be, they get all this knowledge, but they, they think that there's something special. And we ought to remain humble. Just always learn, always learn about God. Learn more about God. Get ourselves out of the way and be able to learn more. All right, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, they, they all had this different idea and they, they wanted to make this their God and they wanted to make that their God and it was their way, their own ways, instead of the way that God wanted them to serve him. Wherefore, God also gave them up that's, this, is, this is a scary verse. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God gave them up to, to do what they wanted, to fulfill their own desires, what, what they, they thought was right. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. How many, Brother Clarence, how many different ways are there? You read? Why are there 4,300 different ways? Because, well, Brother Jay, you know, you've got your way, but I've got my way, and, and I'm going to follow God the way I, I want to follow God, and I've got it all worked out with God. I, 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 I've got it all worked out. I figured this out in my own head, and I don't like what you, you say that the scriptures are saying there, so I am not going to follow that. Instead of what does the word of the Lord say about it? There's only one word of God. <laughs> One Lord, one faith, one baptism. You know, if we let ourselves get in the way, we'll come up with our own way. <laughs> and that's not right. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. 
We see this all over now. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. This is a repercussion. This is an outcome of not serving the Lord correctly. Of, of trying to put ourselves on a pedestal. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to think about God. They didn't want to know about God. You know, God's not going to just push someone away from him. You know, he wants everybody to come to him. He's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish. But we can push away from him. We can get so caught up in ourselves. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. We ought to be careful. We ought to get over ourselves and make sure that we're following the Lord the right way. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient unto parents. It all starts with they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. So God said, fine, <laughs> fine. You want to do your own ways? Look what that's going to lead to. You're going to be filled with all these bad things that is not going to be in heaven. <laughs> None of these things are going to be welcome in God's kingdom. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Wow. Anybody know what this month is? <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid to call out sin. This month is Pride Month. <laughs> Pride Month. To celebrate something that is an abomination unto God. They're so proud in themselves of what they're doing. And they're celebrating it. And people who don't even believe in that way are celebrating with them. And how dare you talk evil of that way? How dare you say that that's wrong? Because they, it's them. They can't get over themselves and come to the right way. You know, we had better realize the right amount of importance to place on God in our lives. Or else if we don't want him to be there, he won't force us to keep him there. He's not going to force us. Second Timothy, if we can go there. Second Timothy chapter 3. Starting in verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. They're here. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I've had people tell me, you know, you've you got to learn to be proud. I've literally had people tell me, you've got to learn to be proud. Proud and do things and be proud of that. That's not what the word of the Lord teaches us. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Look what I've done. Look how great I am. No, we can't be like that. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. How dare you be so self-righteous, brother Mark? You think you're perfect, don't you? Trying to live right. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. I don't see that anywhere, do you guys? <laughs> no, that's everywhere. Lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Because they're worried about self. You know, covetous, <laughs> wanting for yourself the things that others have, you know, that's all about me. All these, re all these, you know, boasters, 
Look at me. It, all these ones I'm over eat. It's all about me, where you're not over yourself. Proud. <laughs> Look at me. Look what I've done. Look how great I am. Unthankful. It goes hand in hand with pride. You know, if you're humble, you're going to be more grateful. It just it goes hand in hand because you're going to appreciate what you do have that much more if you have humility. Headstrong, or I'm sorry, heady, which is headstrong. You know, you don't think that you have to slow down. You don't have to be careful. Stubborn. <laughs> Similar, you know, it's, it's kind of like rashly, but that's all about me, all about me. High-minded, thinking of themselves highly, lifted up, puffed up. You know, Corinthians talks about those that are puffed up. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They wanted the things that made them happy rather than wanting the Lord. And it's all about them, all about them, all about them. That's why I say it, and, and the most... Uh, uh, humble manner, <laughs> uh, respectful way. We got to get over ourselves. We have to. If we're going to come to the Lord, we can't let ourselves get in the way. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. They, they're kind of there. They got a form of godliness. They're almost right. They're close enough. We should turn away. So they deny the power thereof. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. You know, lust, desiring something, it's all about me. It's what I want, what I desire, and I need to get over that and worry about what God wants and what God desires, what God wants me to do. Not what I want to do. All of these things are rooted in not putting the flesh down, putting the flesh in subjection, all of these things. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What a shame. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. You know, I didn't have this written down to read on. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. He's, this is a contrast. But, you know, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. He went through them. Paul went through them. It wasn't about him. He was willing to endure it for the mission, for the fight, for the, for the race that was set before him. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know, we're going to go through things, and it's going to get worse. But we've got to get ourselves out of the way, knowing that it's for, for the cause. <laughs> It's for what we're called to do. But evil men and seducers, seducers, people are going to try to entice us out of this way. They're going to pervert the gospel. They're going to make it seem like it's so close. You know, when Satan in, in the beginning, when the serpent tempted them, he changed one word. He added one word. It was so close. You put them up next to each other, so close, but in a totally different meaning. It says they're going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We've got to be careful, though, for that strange fire. Matthew 16. If we can go here. Matthew 16 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It starts with denying yourself. Say, I'm God, I'm out of the picture. Deny himself. And, and take up his cross and follow him, me, follow me. You know, we can't try to follow the Lord if we haven't first denied ourselves. 
and the things that we want, our ambitions, our dreams, our goals, all these things. You know, we can live this life, but it's got to all center on him. Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life, <laughs> you know, you lose your life. You're going to give it up. For my sake shall find it. We'll have a better life. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And you know, a lot of people, we all have a, a well, not all of us, but there's a price tag. That, you know what, we can, we can stand so far, so far, but when things get a little harder, or the thing that we're selling out for God gets a little bit better, you know, I, I wouldn't sell out for God for this much money, but I would sell out for God to God for this much money, or it starts little by little, and we slowly let it get in there. I saw a house today, it was $500 million. Would you miss church for six months to live in that house? You know, it's those kinds of things. Do we have a price tag? Or are we truly, there's a song, not for sale, you know. Get ourselves out of the way. What we want, get it out of the way. What, is, what would you be profited if you could have literally everything in this entire world, but you miss out with God? Nothing's worth it. Nothing's worth it. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. <laughs> a lot of people say works don't matter, but what you do does matter. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You know, I want to get over myself because I want to be ready when that reward comes. I want to not worry about the things of this life. I want to be working for the Lord when he comes on that day. Jump back to Matthew 10. Let's read a couple of verses here. Matthew 10, 38, 39. And he that, you know, you can read back from 34, but and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Many people want the rewards of God, but they don't want the cross that comes along with it. Because they're so worried about themselves. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through those things. I don't want to give that up. I want to have, I want to have Jesus, and I want to still do whatever I want to do. But we have to come to the Lord and we have to deny ourselves and follow him. Take up that cross. You know, John 3, 30 and 31, John the Baptist was talking. You know, John, he was over himself. <laughs> he wasn't worried about himself. He wasn't trying to lift himself up. John the Baptist was a good man. He was called and he had a purpose. Before it was, it was ordained before he was even born. But let's let's read what just two verses. He must increase, but I, I, I must decrease. He must decrease. It's all about the Lord. It's not about me. John realized that. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Above all. So I want to continue to decrease so that God can increase. I want to get over myself so that it's all about Him. It's, it's more about Him than it is about me. You know, get out of the way for what God is doing. You know, I'm not the star of the show. You and I aren't the star of the show. We ought to just be showing forth the glory of God, what he wants. 
His work. You know, are we in His way because we can't get ourselves, we can't get over ourselves, can't let ourselves go, let ourselves die. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1, starting in verse 10. You know, these are really good scriptures here in the book of 1 Corinthians. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Where do divisions often come? From pride. From people wanting things their own way. Not being able to be humble and saying, what does the Word of God say? What's the right way? You know, they say there's three sides to every story, my side, your side, and the truth. You know, I want to go with the truth. I want to go with what God says. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you, every one of you, saith, I am of Paul. He had a mess going on here. I am of Paul. I am of Paul. And I of Apollos. Like there's some significance to that. Like that's so important. I'm special because I'm of this one. I'm of that one. And I have Apollos and I have Cephas. And I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? <laughs> it's not about Paul. It's not about Apollos. It's not about Cephas. It's not about JJ. It's not about any of us. It's about Christ. It's about what he wants, what his word says. So we got to get ourselves out of the way, get I out of the way, and, and let him, it, it be about him. I thank God that I baptized, he said, I thank God that I baptized none of you. They really had to have driven him to this point to where he said, I thank God that I baptized none of you. But Crispus and Gaius, he baptized a few of them. And he's thanking God for that. <laughs> because they were each saying, oh, well, I'm of this, I'm of that, you know. It's not about I, it's about the Lord. Sorry. Lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Hmm kind of hang out on this verse for a little bit. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Paul had his ego in check. He really did. He wouldn't be able to write these words if he didn't have his ego in check. Because he said, I wasn't sent to baptize. You know, and that's not what it's about anyway. You know, it's about us preaching Christ, us getting people in. It's not about me. He's realizing I have my work. These people have their work. They have their work so that God can be glorified. But he had to get himself under control. He had to get over himself. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Brought it all down. It's not about what man knows. It's about what God's doing. It's all about us getting back to him. When, when you feel like you're wise or, or you're prudent or you're, you're the scribe, you're an expert disputer, you're making it about you, not about the Lord. Not about, hey, let's, let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what, what God has told us to do. Not my ideas, not my thoughts, not my ways, but God's ways. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. 
It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe so that they don't glory in it. They realize that I'd be nothing without the Lord. I'd be nothing without him. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, doesn't matter, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. It all centers back to him. All centers back to the Lord. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Listen to that. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. How am I going to get puffed up in myself and think that I'm something that even God on his bad day is stronger than I'll ever be, is wiser than I'll ever be? I ought to get over myself, realize it's all about him. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. God couldn't go to those people because they wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't give up what they thought to follow him. So he chose those that the world kind of pushed off to the side. He made something out of them, made a vessel out of them. Because they didn't think of themselves as anything. They were humble. They were over themselves. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things, or lowly things, and things which are despised, hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. He flipped it upside down so that people would realize we, we are nothing without him. We ought to not lift ourselves up. Get over ourselves. That no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh. No flesh. None of us. None of us can brag. None of us can say that we're something. But of him are ye. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, (laughs) all of that. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. He's all those things for us, not us. None of us one day said, I'm going to make a way to be saved. (laughs) No, God sought us out. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, Let him glory in the Lord, not in himself, not in anything that he's done, but let him glory in the Lord. Look what my God has done. And I go back to that story of the different levels, if you will, or however you want to say it, uh, different magnitude, how great of thankfulness, of gratitude. God saved my soul. (laughs) I'm going to glory in that. I was nothing. I was lost. But God called me. He made a way that I could be saved. It's not about me, not about me. You know, you could read all the way through 1 Corinthians, I'm not going to read it, 1 Corinthians 2, the whole chapter, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 10, and then 16 to 23, all these. I mean, it talks about getting over yourself. Don't be puffed up. Keep yourself humble. Keep it all about the Lord. 1 Corinthians 4 talks about it. Deuteronomy, if we could. You can tell who uh, my pastor is because I'm only on page 2 out of 5, Brother Randall. I'm only on page 2 out of 5. There's so much in the Bible on this about getting over yourself. Deuteronomy, I told you I got all that time. Deuteronomy 12 and 10 through 14. You can read this, this whole chapter and read Exodus. I mean, just read all of this about the tabernacle of all this. 12 and 10 through 14. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, 
And when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety, then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Listen, I'm going to read the whole verse and then go back. Thither there shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the Lord. I'm, I'm just going to read until 14, then we're going to enjoy this a little bit. And he, ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you, take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> Then in verse 11, then this is so good. This is so plain, so clear. Then sh there shall be a place, a place that which the Lord your God, not you, you don't pick the place, Brother Jay. You don't pick the place. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. There's going to be a place here. Once you have rest, there's going to be a place here where God, the Lord your God is going to choose to cause his name to dwell there. That, that place, that one place is where you ought to bring your offering, your tithes, everything. A place. I didn't make this. This isn't my opinion. Right? I'm only 30 years old. I wouldn't have time to come up with something as perfect as this. Right? <laughs> I don't claim to be something wise. I didn't make this up. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. So the, where the name of the Lord, what is his name? Jesus Christ. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, everything. And ye shall rejoice, all right, back, let's go forward. But in the, verse 14, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command thee. Well, it says, listen, I mean, and this is, this is way back in the beginning, but it's a type and shadow of things to come. Still holds true, but it says, in one of thy tribes. Well, what if one of the other tribes wanted to get lifted up and say, yeah, well, you know, our tribe's going to do things a little bit different than your tribe. We're going to have our own place. We're going to serve God, but we want to do it our own way. No, that's not what God is saying here. He said he's going to choose a place. Can it get any plainer? <laughs> I mean, I know all of, we believe, but can it get? It's good to affirm these things. Paul said, "I would that you affirm these things daily, right? <sighs> Choose to cause His name to dwell there." So, I'm not going to get puffed up in myself to think that I can come up with my own way. I'm not going to get married to my own thoughts, my own w thinking of how God wants things to do. I'm going to go to the place <laughs> that God, that the Lord my God ch chose. He chose. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus Christ said that, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right? So I'm, I'm not going to go. He said... <laughs> Don't do it in these other places. Don't do it anywhere else but this place. Brother JJ, you're crazy. You think that there's only one place? <laughs> well, you know, I guess I'm pretty crazy that I read the Bible and take it for what it says. Take the word for what the word of God says. I'm not going to think that I can come up with my own way. I got to get over myself and realize what the Lord is saying. There's one more that I'd like to go to if I can. Philippians 
three. This kind of sums it up. Like I said, there's, there's so much. Philippians three. And starting in verse one. Finally, my brethren, I guess that's a good place to close. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you, th same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. It's not about, not about me, not about the man, not about the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, <laughs> if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he mightest trust in the flesh, yeah. I more. <laughs> you think you're something? <laughs> Let me put you in your check. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. He had zeal before. Touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Paul, look at, look at that. He, touching the righteousness of the law, blameless. He was doing some good things, right, from, from a fleshly standpoint. If anybody could brag, I'm more, he said. <laughs> and, and, and he put it there. He put it out there. But he said all those things, it's all but loss for Christ. But Jay, you're right, nothing. It's all loss. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of of Christ Jesus, my Lord. I count all things but loss. For whom, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Listen to that. For, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He suffered the loss of all things for Christ. Suffer, for him, not for himself. For the Lord, he gave up himself. He got over himself so that he could follow Christ. He denied himself. All of these things that he could brag about, but he denied all that. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You know, there was, there was something bigger than what Paul had accomplished. That, that couldn't make it. You know, the, the glory of man, that won't make it. That won't stand. We have to put that behind us and we have to follow Christ. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. All this loss so that he can obtain the resurrection of the dead. So, 14, I press <laughs> toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, <laughs> you're, you're pushing in quicksand if you're trying to press toward the mark and you haven't gotten over yourself. You're not going to make it. You've got to get over yourself if you're going to press the right way. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, that same mind, not about me, same mind. And if, any, if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. You know, if you got anything else, eh, well, God's going to bring you back. God's going to set things the right way. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. To conform to the same thing, got to get over self. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, 
and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. It's in this last couple of verses. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, whose God is their belly. How can I make myself happy? How can I build myself up? They're their own God. You know, I, there's a song I say, about, I, I love that song, When I Lay My Isaac Down. Sometimes we got to lay ourselves down. <laughs> Sometimes we're our own Isaac, and we got to get ourselves out of the way. With pride and ego. For our conversation is in heaven. For our conversation, the things that we're going to worry about, the things we're going to talk about, that's in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, let's get over ourselves and let's, let's get the Lord on our mind. And, and even more so, you know, I, need, I got to decrease so that he will increase. So I, I pray that you got something from it. You know, I, I know I did. It's something that we all ought to work on, you know, to, to, to continue to decrease so that we could show forth God more. So I pray that you got something from it tonight. Brother.